Perfect, thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. I am here in the heart of America, broadcasting live and heard on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Also being simulcast by wolfspiritradio.com. Um, and I just wanted to draw everyone's attention to the fact that they're having some network issues here tonight at Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Uh, we bounced on and off a couple times before we even got on the air tonight. Uh, no guarantees how smooth the ride will be tonight. It's just part of the flow of what's going on energetically on this planet and with all of the technology. But before I go forward here, uh, I do have a couple of quick announcements. Please do log on to my website. That's journeyswithrebecca.com. Sign up for the free newsletter. By the way, it is a brand new e uh, newsletter service that I'm using, um, and I've sent out my first one one this week. I'll be sending out another one uh, at sometime over the weekend with all the new guests, the up updates, and and lineups, along with complete uh, uh, information on the topics, their websites, etc., and so forth. So it's newly designed. It's much easier to read. Uh, I had a lot of fun putting it together, so I hope you will uh, join in in the free uh, newsletter that I send out once a week to keep you updated on not only the guests and topics, but events and any changes that may come up. I also want to let everyone know that uh, my workshop for November 10th and 11th, Tarot, the Intuitive, uh, uh, Tarot, the Intuitive Approach, uh, is quickly filling up. It is a two-day workshop. It's intensive. It's online. Very inexpensive. Uh, for a two-day workshop. I hope that you guys will check out that on the classes and events page uh, for a complete detailed listing. Uh, it's not about learning just how to read tarot cards. It's about tapping into uh, symbology, archetypal energy. It expands you. Uh, we get into the quantum. We get into uh, the unified field. It gets to be extremely powerful little workshop that I've been teaching for 20-some years and updated uh, as it's needed. Uh, so I hope you will check it out. Um, by the way, the book Tarot, the Intuitive Approach is now available. Uh, not if, if you do not have a Kindle, it's now available uh, to download uh, onto your PC. Uh, I do not have hard copies of the book. However, if you cannot um, manage to get the book before the class, uh, doing with those two things, please write to me, mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. Let me know what your problem is or issue or what's going on, and we'll try to resolve it so that you can get a copy of the book uh, before the workshop that's, again, November 10th and 11th. So really exciting. Uh, my other book, which is The Great Revealing, the first one, uh, is in its wrap-up stages. It's going into editing next week, and hopefully that will be available very, very soon. I'm looking very forward uh, to bringing that book out. I also wanted to let you know that on the front page of my website is a link uh, to Carrie Cassidy's show. I was on there, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Gosh, I don't even know what day it is. I guess it was Wednesday I was invited on. And um, that link is there. It was a really fabulous show that I did on Whistleblower Radio. We also had a live stream event with myself and Hugh Newman, Carrie Cassidy, Michael Tellinger was not able to be on. We kept losing Internet connection with him. Uh, that is available for delayed stream. It was free of charge. Uh, it's all about the Egypt trip, what we're going to find. There were some questions that we took and answers. Uh, so I hope that you'll go into Whistleblower Radio. Uh, check out that past live stream event for, the, for today. It was scheduled for yesterday, but again, with all the issues uh, with the Internet, 
Uh, we weren't able to actually get on uh, for Wednesday. We we're on today at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So if you would like to check that out, please make sure that you do so. For tonight, please do join us in the chat room. You can get to that at Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, journeyswithrebecca.com, and click on the JWR Radio tab. There's a chat box in there, as well as wolfspiritradio.com. Please remember that both of these stations, freedomslips.com and wolfspiritradio.com, are commercial, free, listener-supported. So use your support buttons on freedomslips.com. Support your favorite show right here on this station. And also use a donation button on Wolf Spirit Radio. Every little bit helps in these times, as you well know. Uh, tonight, my guest is Dave Kelso. We're going to be getting into some conversations on UFOs, ETs, the Roswell incident, and so much more. So we hope that you will interact with us tonight by asking those questions. Again, the monitor's We'll forward those questions to us. We may open up the phone lines a little bit later as well. Um, and we're going to be talking about the other guest that would have been on with us tonight. Uh, but we've got her rescheduled, and we'll talk about that in the second hour. So without further ado, let us go ahead and bring our guest on, Dave Kelso. Welcome to the show. Hi, ho Kermit D. Frog here, and you are listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Oh, there you go. Right on, brother. <laughs> Right how's on, that brother. For, how's that for a soundbite? Yeah, I like that for a soundbite. That's very cute. We, we love that. We'll use it on a break sometime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's one. Here's one. How about on Revolution Radio? And there's another one. On Wolf Spirit Radio. So you can, like, play with that in Audacity Editor or something, you know. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well... I have to say that um, Dave has, uh, I've known Dave for a while now, for a few years. We've had a lot of uh, different uh, conversations through the years. And tonight, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about the whole UFO and ET thing. But before I I did, I want to remind everyone that uh, because of Hurricane Sandy, uh, there has been a lot of technical issues uh, in regards to Internet and Skype and networks and email clients and all of that uh, across the board, uh, there's, there was a lot of downed, uh, uh, downed services. Some are just running at half mass, so to speak. So uh, if by any chance we do go back down again tonight, please just know to be patient. We'll get back online. We'll get the show back up. And we all just have to remember that these are not quote unquote, normal times that we live in. And we all have to exercise our own understanding that things just are not going to work uh, always in the way that we anticipate them to work uh, in these days ahead. And certainly weeks and months, I would assume, uh, based on the energetics literally out in the solar system these days. So um, just a kind of not only a reminder for you guys, but for myself as well. <laughs> Hey, Rebecca. <laughs> yes. I'm going to have to interrupt right quick because we had a synchronicity. Because as soon as you mentioned 2012 Energies, my phone started ringing. You might have heard a little bit of it. And I look on the caller ID, and it, sa- it said Obama 2012. Ah. ah. And so, of course, it being uh, one of the two heads on the political snake, I did not answer the phone. Mm, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. We, Old energy. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And the only way to actually get rid of that is to actually get rid of the political system that uh, resides here. And, and uh, I'm not sure if that's actually going to happen in the time soon, although we could uh, certainly hope for a different, different way of doing this. But there you go. <laughs> We're not going to get political tonight because, boy, that'll just be a mess. That'll just be a mess on top of everything else. Yeah. Anyway, no so, so talk about, let's talk about, uh, or let you start talking about um, the idea that, of your presence there with the ET stuff. I let, you know, just let's roll with it. And again, I want to tell everyone, if you've got questions or comments or you want us to talk about something specific, please, this is the way to do it, is just write it in the chat box, if you can, in all caps, and the monitors will forward those to us, and we'd we'd love to interact with you guys, so please do. All righty. Um, yeah, I mean, I get, and now my phone is, like, ringing again, and now it's actually my father calling on the other line. Oh, how space-time is just compressing. Um, everything kind of hitting us at once. And, you know, that's kind of a part of uh, 
the topics today in regards to, you know, our individual lives in 2012 and the energies and, and the ETs, I mean, everything's all kind of culminating and, and compressing to this one point to shake us free of, you know, the old energy and our old paradigms and the counterproductive ways of doing things. And, you know, because the only thing that's really going to work is if we, if, if we trust our own intuition and start learning how to do that. Um, one of the reasons that, you know, were that inspired this show today, um, not only my own experiences and my shared experiences with Katarina, who's my best friend, and you could you could search for her, Katarina Edwards, on on YouTube, on Facebook, so on and so forth. And my dad is totally being a Jack Russell freaking terrier. Anyway, <laughs> call it again. Um, so anyway, um, well, do you, know. you do you need to mute? <laughs> do you need to mute your mic? And and take that so that we can we can go forward with this without interruption because I'd be happy to chat a little bit more while you handle what you need to. All right, cool. That that'd be brief. Give me just one moment, okay? Thank All right. You. Just <laughs> let me know when you're that. back on. That's okay. It's just fine. Absolutely. Okay. So you Please know. Please hold. The next available day will be with you momentarily. <laughs> so this is um, this is what these times are all about, folks. I mean. Um, disruptions 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 and i will tell you some of it is is really about the energetics out there um and that is the point is to try to keep you off center off balance to keep you agitated get you frustrated uh keep you in a, a negative state of mind a negative state of being I, I i'm simply saying this this to everyone is please just take a deep breath and release it when you get in those moments because, honestly, this is just the way it's going to be for a while. No matter what you're talking about, it can be the sim- most simplistic things to even the most complicated things. And the more we get ourselves agitated, the, the larger the problem actually is than what it, it truly is. So um, I have to say that these last three days for myself personally have been uh, challenging in this technological world that we live in. Uh, with the um, interruptions, with the events that were scheduled, with uh, phone calls. Um, I have to tell you guys, last Friday night when I had Stuart Swerdlow on, uh, apparently there was a problem uh, with, I guess, my end of it. So I have to, I'm going to share this story now because it's actually a little amusing uh, as well as, as quite disconcerting. I'm still not quite sure what to think of it. But um, right after we came back from the first half hour break, um, I noticed it. I, I heard this clicking in my headset. Now, remember, I, I, I was on the same internet service. I was in the literally in the same physical space with the same equipment, logged into the same place that I always do when I do my show uh, on the previous night, which was last week, Thursday, a week ago today. So nothing had changed. There was no bad weather at that point. Nothing was going on. And after we came back from that 30-minute break, again, I heard this clicking noise. Uh, I heard started hearing this echoing. Uh, if you all remember, if you were there listening to the Stuart Swerdlow interview, you did hear uh, me going off and online. I uh, rebooted uh, the server uh, from my end several times. Um, but here was the freaky point. At one point, I had disconnected from the radio station altogether. I was no longer broadcasting. I had unplugged my headset from the computer itself. So nowhere was I broadcasting. Nowhere was I did, he, did I even have my headphones on when, as I was sitting there uh, getting ready to reboot, the radio station was actually still playing in my headset and this is a hardwired headset it is not a wireless headset i distinctly heard somebody talking to me in my ear a man's voice i heard typing over the other end when my headset wasn't even plugged in so when i tell you that things are strange i'm telling you things are very very strange they're odd bizarre and that's the new normal and and we have to get used to these kinds of things going on until we get on to the other side of all of this shifting and changing in these energetics, when it's going to work itself out, it may work itself out differently than what we expect, but certainly it should be smoother. Our technology uh, will need to be upgraded to kind of go along with uh, the new energetics that literally the Earth herself is sitting in. Um, these last three days, again, were uh, mega disruptions uh, all across the board. 
uh, even tonight, even just before coming on the air, a lot of communications uh, uh, was was very, very um, disjointed, um, didn't flow smoothly, and it is really a sign of the times. I do know that Mercury is getting ready to go uh, retrograde. Uh, we've got a, an extremely unusual lineup coming up next Tuesday for the elections, um, and it's just all in all, just a very, very different energetic time that we live in. So uh, I just kind of wanted to broach that topic a little bit as well uh, and, and just kind of give everyone a heads up because this is just kind of the way that it, it, it is a little bit and it's going to continue that way for a little bit. So the more we can kind of band together and give each other space and patience, uh, the better it is it's going to be for all of us. Uh, Dave, have you returned yet? It does not look like Dave is, is back online yet. Um, <laughs> no, Redux, I don't think it was Weisenberg. Uh, very, very weird voice, but thank you for the, uh, uh, thank you for the uh, little uh, mention there in uh, Revolution Radio Freedoms at freedomslips.com uh, chat box there. I don't think it was Weisenberg. <laughs> But I would really like to know how that kind of stuff happens. I mean, that's just kind of the the strange events that kind of go on, um, and there is no there is no quote unquote logical um, logical way of explaining that when you're not even broadcasting and you have nothing plugged in, that your headset is still playing a show that you're not even on. <laughs> you know. So the you know sometimes what they say is uh, truth is stranger than fiction and in that case that that's what that was last Friday night and uh, uh, so I do apologize to everyone for the very strange show that I did with Stuart as far as the audio um, portion of it and the quality I guess I want to say uh, because it really was not uh, up to par at all. And there was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could change because there was nothing to change. There was nothing to fix because nothing was broken. Um, and I, I appreciate everyone's help. I mean, everyone came, you know, was writing me and typing me and telling me what to do. And, you know, trust me when I tell you, I checked all that stuff and none of it, uh, none of it was changed or different. There wasn't anything that uh, uh, had been reset or anything like that. Uh, there was also another person in the room with me at that time. Uh, using uh, their computer to, uh, logged in, and they did not have the same kind of issues with their Skype going down or any of that. Um, it just is a kind of a continuous thing here, as far as I, um, as far as I, I'm kind of concerned here. And it does seem like that whenever certain people are on or certain topics are discussed, seems to be when the biggest fluctuations of, uh, I guess, interruptions. Um, do begin here on the radio show. So I, I'm wondering if any of you guys have been experiencing that as well because it truly has is a sign of the times. I think we've lost our guest. I think he's actually gone, gone. Um, uh, so let me see here what's going on. Um, hmm. Okay, so we don't know. Maybe he's left the building. I'm not sure. Um yeah, yeah, it really was. Um, I'm just, I'm just not sure, you know, really uh, that they're, you know, when we talk about uh, the quantum and the metaphysics and and you know the dimensional shifts and changes and all of that stuff. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you there, uh, um, Rebecca. I am back, and as I like to say, my my physical reality tends to provide real life illustration. And I was talking about the contrast and the flows and letting go. I just had a very contrast uh, experience with my father, and it was very, very interesting. Um, he was kind of of the, the old energy, that resistance, because um, my paradigms have been shifting upwards, my energy uh, shifting upwards, and the, the, the lower energies, they want to transmute up, but at the same time, they're trying to bring me down. So I just gave myself my sovereign permission you know, to be who I am without judgment of myself and without judging my father at all and saying what I needed to say within my sovereignty and granting, you know, that to my dad as well, that what he was doing is just what he felt that he needed to do for himself. At the same time, I didn't judge any of his words. I said what I felt 
needed to be said, and we, I, I took the actions that I felt needed to be taken. And uh, most importantly, I took responsibility for my actions. I did not. I did not cast blame on him for anything. This is very important for 2012, folks. Do not cast blame. Take responsibility for your part in it, and don't judge the other person's part in it. That doesn't mean you can't like what they're doing. You could think they're they're an a-hole and being inappropriate, this and that and whatever. That's all just a part of your sovereignty. Um, you just you know accept your part in it, accept their part in it. Don't judge it. Um, let them do what they feel they need to do, and and do what you feel you need to do. And what happened is the. The, the circumstances, they rose up, they climax, really nasty climax, but then they quickly dissipated. And I found myself, you know, telling my dad, I, I told him, I take full responsibility for my part in it. And he, he was completely shut down because he was of that energy that wants to dominate. And I was holding my vibration, as they say. When, when, when people say hold your vibration, that's, just, that's not just metaphysical, new agey, mumbo jumbo talk. It's just an archetype to describe something because it's better than saying that person doing this, that other thing over there because that wouldn't make any sense. Don't even know what we're talking about. So holding your vibration is just, it's just your right to be you. And, you know, respecting the other person's right to be them. That way you're holding your vibration easily. And because what you resist persists, the more resistance the other person adds, it actually makes it easier for you to hold your vibration. But if you're trying to resist their vibration and trying to dominate them and insist that, you know, they have to see your point and you have to force them to see your point, then you're in resistance to them and it's taking all this extra energy out of you and empowering them. Because light and dark's a duality. They both need each other to, to spin each other around. So, you know, this is why JWR is so magical. Always there is real-time, real-moment, you know, illustration. And my dad was right on cue, right on topic. And so let this be an example of just one of those 2012 shifting moments you have experienced it here on air, live, practical application. None of you are crazy. This is all happening for real. <laughs> well... I'm not sure we're all not crazy, and that's a good thing, man. <laughs> Weird is the new normal. It is, man. It is in my world. So when I talk about normal now, I'm talking about the weirdness, because that really has been, is my new normal. Strange, oh. odd, bizarre, uh, sometimes illogical, certainly not practical in all cases. Um, but it seems to me that, and I've talked about this now for weeks and, and months on my show Dave, about, um, you know, everything is shifting and changing. We're all beginning to have to wear these new shoes that we're, 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 we don't even know what the hell they look like most of the time. <laughs> and, and we're trying to step into them and, and we're trying to, we have no reference points. In other words, just like yeah. you missed the conversation that I had when you were off the air about what had happened uh, on my last night, on my last Friday night show on this station and also on Wolf Spirit on both of them, on both these stations. And it was a, a, a strange anomaly, but uh, um, it was one of those things where this is the new normal. And, I, and, and it is for me. It's, it's like whatever is unexpected, and I don't know what that is because it is, hasn't arrived yet, it just yeah. shows up and you have to just walk through it and you just have to take that deep breath and sit back and go, okay, so let me move forward. Because if we get caught up in the uh, frustration of it all, because it can be very frustrating. And, you know, I keep saying to people, you know, I've got this big, huge bruise on my forehead from boom, boom, boom against the wall. And it's true, you do, because you're going, oh, I'm just not sure what this is. I don't know, you know, I don't know what this means yet. <laughs> because we've not yeah. yet experienced it. And so it can be frustrating, but if we sit back and take oh, a yeah. deep breath, and it really does play itself out. You know, it's called being yeah. in the flow and sink of your life. So It and, does. To validate, to validate you, Rebecca, one thing I didn't, didn't mention is, um, and we've all been in these moments, in my scenario with my father, he was trying to insist that I had to do this this way, I had to do that way, and on top of it, right now. And I, I stepped so much in, into my sovereignty that I was just like, look, I'm a guest I was I'm a guest on on the radio right now. I paused it, you know, to, to talk to you about these things. 
And it was um, one of those things where him and I share mutual responsibility and something. I'm not going to get into all the details of the semantics, but just something him and I have going that, you know, we each have our agreed upon parts in it. And um, what I did is I, I took my sovereignty that, no, I'm not doing this right this second and that we both have our part in it. And, you know, just like, hey, you know, we both we both do our part. So if you're going to. You know, if you're going to fall back on, on your part because you want me to do my part right this second and it can't wait a little bit, then okay. Then what we both have established is going to start to collapse and crumble within this. But, you know, I'm not going to judge that. If that's what you want, then that's what you want, whatever. And that's really what started the shift going. And it, it ended up to where, you know, he ended up just relinquishing and being... Just, just surrendering to my energy because I was holding my vibration easily. And now he's just taking a little break real quick, and then he's going to go do that which he was demanding, tyrannically demanding, I do right now. But because I was in my sovereignty without judgment of him, things climaxed up quickly, they stopped, they went down, and the end result was the reality that I intended for myself. And that's just one of the magical things about it. Bashar talks about an echo um, I like to call it Bashar's echo, to where the circumstances are just a, a reflection. When you say, I'm sovereign and I've learned my lessons and I'm going to go in a different direction, the reality gives you an opportunity to do that. So you're presented with the same scenario over again so that you have the opportunity to deal with it under a different energy and thus shift the timeline. And that's what I just did. So Rebecca is so right. This is the sort of thing that these are the new shoes. We're able to do this. We are. And when we're in these moments, we have to keep that in mind. And it's so difficult to keep that in mind sometimes because we're used to what we're used to. But if we can keep, that's why being present in the now is so important. Pay attention to what you're doing, your energy, what you're thinking, what you're feeling at the same time. Suddenly you click with higher self and it goes, oh my God, I remember all the stuff that I know that usually I forget. All the stuff Rebecca talks about, all these other people talk about. You're able to use it in the moment and things just magically shift. And you're like, oh, my God, holy crap, as you observe your reality and disbelief and like, wow, that was easier than I thought. All this uppity uppityness was all an illusion. Oh, my God. There you go. All right. So, um, all right, everybody, take a deep breath. Ooh, we're going to re- <gasps> We're going to shift. Let's shift the conversation. Heck, yeah. Yeah, let's shift it. Um, uh, yeah, I like that. Shift, shift, shift. Powerful show, and we're barely out the door. Powerful show already. <laughs> but you're good like that, Rebecca. You're good like that. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, oh, I appreciate it. Uh, real quick mention here at the top of the hour, uh, Revolution Radio will be doing a uh, reboot during the break. So there may be uh, a couple of minutes of silence, but we will be brought back up on air. So I will remind everyone just before the break, as well that there could be uh, a couple of minutes of silence as he reboots the uh, servers uh, because of some network issues. So just to let everybody know, and it may not happen, but, you know, (laughs) we're going to try to be prepared for everything. UFOs, ETs, let's go for it. You're all righty. All righty, cool. Um, uh, There's a a YouTube channel I run, um, Paradigm Shift Docs for you. Let me spell that out. Paradigm Shift, the number four, D-O-C-S and the letter U. Or you can get to that at HTTP colon slash slash Paradigm Shift dot for a United Humanity dot com. And it simply redirects to the YouTube channel. And among all the playlists there, there is one that's going to be of importance to a lot of you, or at least you guys reflected that on 9-11-2012 when Alex Collier was on the show, um, Roswell, an alien interview. And um, you can find that playlist in there. Um, someone made an audio book of it. Um, and it's, uh, it's very well done, and they, they also have the text, you know, in the video and everything. But they made an audio book for those of you who prefer listening, such as, such as I do. I hate reading, but I love listening and watching. And so for any of you who are really wanting to dig into Roswell, an alien interview, but haven't been able to find the PDF or don't want to want to find the PDF because you prefer audio books, then you could go there, click in on the playlist, just browse it, you'll see it, Roswell, 
um, alien interview, and it's an audio book right there. And I've listened to it, and I, I have, um, you know, my my perspectives on it from from what I observed. Um, the one thing that people have to keep in mind about Roswell, an alien interview, is the energies and the paradigms at the time. They had just gotten out of World War II, from what I understand. The girl that was in telepathic communication with the alien was only 23. I don't mean only in a negative way. I just mean as far as life experience in this 3D reality. And she was very much indoctrinated into the Catholicism, into the military rank structure, and the paradigms of lack and limitation. Then here you have an ET to where all of this is completely foreign. So the ET is trying to bridge the paradigms, and so is the girl. And the way a lot of things were phrased is a lot of it's going to seem negative or not make any sense, but it's because of paradigm misunderstanding. And this is where you've really got to click into higher self and use your discernment as you're listening to this. Like, for example, um, basically, if you want if you wanted to put another label on Roswell and Alien Interview... You know how, like, Star Wars, you had the original three, then you had the prequels? We could call this the prequels to Bringers of the Dawn. Because it, uh, it goes into the, the nature of the conflict and, and, the, and the trap of the dualities and the amnesia trap. But it's just, it's phrased so negatively, um, but not on purpose. There was no negative intention on anyone's part. Like, um, one thing that that the alien was saying is that there are higher hierarchy structures based on rank and um, social standing and accomplishments and even body types are based on this. That was a mistranslation. If you really check in with your higher self, what this entity was trying to say is that there are dimensional layers of frequency in the universe or multiverse or whatever you want to call it and your physical reality is going to be directly dependent upon that which is in alignment with your frequency and your core belief systems but there was no structure in common English to explain all that the right way there was no structure in common English 10 years ago to explain that the right way so the, he, the entity explained it as best as it could from using the English words of the of the paradigm of the girl, and the closest thing they could come up with is hierarchy and rank and social standing. There's another um, another misnomer in there, to where um, this this race, benevolent race, the domain, says that they own and control one quarter of the known universe. That's another complete mistranslation if you check in with higher self. What the entity is trying to say is that this is their space of operation in which they maintain their sovereignty and assist others into evolving and gaining their own sovereignty. But when you're when you're an ET that didn't know English an hour ago and trying to work with a paradigm that's completely foreign to you, you're you know, you're gonna you're going to do the best that that you can, trying to use words that match, and it's not going to not going to work uh, properly. Well, and and just to add a little bit to that, we've been saying a lot of people have been saying a lot for the last couple of years. Uh, the the English language specifically uh, falls way short of being able to fully identify and explain uh, topics of conversation. Uh, that are not of the third dimensional reality and because we don't understand always enough uh, the the terminology has to be broken down into uh, at least some semblance uh, of a form of structure in in which there can be some form of understanding uh, to the human mind as where we're at uh, in this time space right now. So it, it's an extremely restrictive thing is this auditory uh, communication that we are fighting ourselves in. 
Uh, telepathic communication is instantaneous. Uh, it's extremely conceptual, and it's it gives you what you know you can call the full Monty. <laughs> so, when when you're having an, uh, a verbal conversation such as we're all having here tonight, uh, it does lose something uh, because there's a, a more and of an expansiveness to any conversation that cannot be articulated in in words. And before we go forward here, Dave, uh, if you will, um, we're gonna we're going to send out. The URLs that you just gave everyone, I'll post them in the chat boxes. So continue on. I didn't want to interrupt. I just wanted to put that piece in there uh, because it, it, it's very easily uh, lost in translation. A lot of this, and you know, this is just one of those uh, points that you're making here, very succinctly. Yep, I'm just handing you that information right now. If you can just give me a moment, you can rant for a couple of more minutes. I'm putting this together for you. All right. Um, so, uh, well, I'm not quite sure what else to add to that. Um, I, I, uh, I know that you have written to me uh, a, a bunch of pieces of information about some of this. And oh, I think I guess this is what I can do. Um, for all of you, he brought up uh, Alex Collier. Um, and Alex Collier, uh, there is a, an announcement coming out here. I'm hoping by one day next week or the following week at the most in regards to a special uh, four-week interview that I did with Alex and some new information that's coming out that's going to be announced here again as soon as I get that all of it has been put together um, we're going to be making that announcement and it's going to be free of charge for people to go listen to uh, this particular four-week um, it was done in four separate settings, and it was uh, it was it was pretty an amazing uh, a time to spend with Alex. I spent quite a bit of time with Alex uh, in this project, and I, I know that you all are going to really enjoy it because he does talk a lot about the A's, the Andromedans, et cetera, and so forth. So um, it's going to be an ex it's going to be exciting for people. It really has. So that being said, I'm posting all these links. For everyone, these are where uh, he's been talking about tonight, where our guest Dave has been talking about. So these are now being posted to all of the chat boxes. So go ahead. Go ahead. All righty. Yeah, I handed you off that information. And I would also um, like to share a bit of an, an epiphany that I had the other night because I, I was watching one of the many Alex Collier videos that you could find easily by just doing a search for Alex Collier on, on YouTube. And there was a member of the audience that asked something, you know, very profound. And Alex gave a very profound answer. And upon that, all the freaking bells and whistles went off in my head. And I'm like, oh, my God, could it be that easy? <clears throat> um, the audience member asked, do you think there is any ways for the for the ETs, be it Andromedans or otherwise, as far as the the mentoring program? You know how Alex talks about ET mentoring, right? Um, right. Program. Well, is there any way for the ETs to directly use the internet? And by directly, I mean the same as you and I use it directly. Log on and just use the thing, right? <clears throat> use it directly within this mentoring program, and. Alex paused for just a moment, and he said, I don't see why not. And then it absolutely a freaking clicked. Because, it, it, think about this. There is a high multidimensional multimedia technology in the hands of the people, making it so that almost anyone can create illusions, which encourages us, to use our own discernment. <clears throat> Logically, you cannot prove if the voice on the audio stream or the photos or videos you see are actually real. Only intuitive discernment can do that. Therefore, humanoid ETs can, if they wish to, communicate directly with us through Skype on internet radio and even show themselves on their own YouTube channels without it violating free will for one very simple reason. There's always going to be those who say, oh no, 
that's blue screen and special effects. That's not real. And those who scream, no, 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 you're a fake, because there's absolutely no way to absolutely prove whether or not what's being seen and heard is absolutely real or not. So then the multimedia information is left to the individual to decide for themselves, is this real or not? Then the ETs can proceed forward in exactly the way two humans establish relations online. Let internet friendships between individual ETs and humans be no different at all than internet friendships between one human and another. Let it evolve naturally, and if it naturally evolves to the in-person meeting level, then, you know, it's beam me up Scotty in a tour of the galaxy in exactly the same way that when I meet internet friends visiting from other cities, I tend to act as their personal tour guide when they're here. So let this be absolutely no difference between us and the ETs than it already is for humans and other humans. How is that for a sovereign grassroots idea? How is that for taking responsibility? How's that? Well, and and I would have to say that, you know, it it really does, uh, if somebody would sit with this for a few minutes and really expand on that particular thought process that you just shared with us, uh, I would have to say that, you know, discernment, discernment, discernment uh, is the biggest key, is the, is the biggest key. Um, people have gotten very, very good at photography and very good at inserting things into pictures that aren't really there to make them, they don't even, a lot of them now don't even look, you can't even tell that they're CGI'd. You cannot see any of that. Um, you cannot tell exactly what's going on. So um, to use your extra sensories, um, the, the deeper, quieter sensories that we all have, the sensing abilities that we all have, and I talk about this, people walking into a room. And even if before anyone speaks, you can walk into a room and you can feel the kind of overall environment before you even step in. You hear people every day walk into a room and go, oh, wow, this is creepy. Or, wow, everyone here just looks really, you know, angry. Well, what they're really saying is that they are feeling something that doesn't feel good to them. They're not equating that necessarily, but their extra senses have kicked in to create that thought. So it brings it into consciousness. Yeah, agreed. And, you know, um, the beauty of the fact that so much trickery can be done in 3D is that allows the benevolent ETs an open door in if we invite them to do it because it's not a violation of free will. Because then they could get up there fully as they are. I mean, they could be taking video from their mothership orbiting some other planet in the back window and from the audience's point of view well how do we know that that's not a guy in a costume standing there behind a green screen we don't or in front of a green screen rather we don't and that is that is what would allow them to do this then it's not a violation of free will they're not forcing themselves on us they don't have to take us to the mothership they could bring the mothership to us through YouTube, and there, there's no way they can force on us that this is or isn't real. The only thing we're forced to do is use our own discernment. So it doesn't violate any of their galactic law, and, you know, all they have to do is log on to one of the satellites and obtain an IP address through that. If the government traces it back, it's going to trace back just to one of their own satellites. It's going to dead end there. So they could get on the net. Of course they can well, you know, we, we think ourselves as this, you know, highly technical, uh, technologically advanced uh, species, and uh, that couldn't be further from the truth, um, you know, as is evident by, you know, even the old ancients. Uh, you know, you look at the way the pyramids were built and, and the different structures around the world um, and, and the carvings and all of that, um, and, and you have to ask yourself, we can't do that now, so... Somebody did that before then, so was it a, was it the race of uh, of us that were more highly advanced? Is it other species? Is it other races? You know, these are all questions that people ask all the time. I'm not sure what the the answer is. I think it depends upon the person's perspective on what they consider truth, because it resonates with some and doesn't resonate with others. Um, 
But that being said, um, you know, we, we have to really begin to expand ourselves and, and really recognize uh, what all of this can potentially mean. We all have to get out of our boxes. Uh, somebody yeah. said that they were looking. Uh, I, was, I was telling you guys I had done an, uh, a live event. Uh, well, I tried to do a live event yesterday, and uh, my picture came up, and two or three people wrote me in the background because they couldn't get a, a an audio, and they said that I looked weird in it, like that it was, uh, it looked like it was projected, like a weird projection, um, and it's just my Skype image that I have on my Skype box, and they said it looked weird, it looked. Um, uh, like it was being projected, like a hologram would be projected. Uh-huh. And then you're talking about this. I was like, that's interesting. Yeah, you're, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, we, we think of satellites as something heavily encrypted and protected, but the ETs can tap into that like you can pick up a child's toy and figure it out. We're not on the, you know, the top of the all that is list of, you know, high technology. I mean... You know, as a matter of fact, I mean, we're really operating in reverse. We're really holding our own technology back with all this consumerism and living in a disposable society where things need to, to break down in order to be replaced to make money, which is based on survival. And we wouldn't need to base anything on survival if we just uncap um, the technology because the only need to base anything on survival is lack and scarcity. Well, if we eliminate lack and scarcity, we eliminate the concern and so on. I'm preaching to the choir, I know. So, um, okay. So, yeah, uh, it's all good. It's all good. I, first of all, I want to direct, uh, we have a couple questions that came in and uh, some of the information coming in the chat box. So let me just let me just speak to that for a minute, if I may, Dave. Um, sure. So, in regards to vibes, you said you guys hearing her says sounds mad, but it's feeling something. Um, so, I apologize if sometimes that I get words mixed up, vibes. Uh, so, let me reframe that question or that statement for you. Sometimes when you walk into a room, you get a feeling that everyone is mad. It's an overall sensation. And you, no one has spoken anything. But you get a feeling that some that it's that people in there are mad or angry. The room in the the vibration in the room feels yeah. something to you. You feel something. So mm-hmm. I hope I can I made that clear for you as well. Um, so I'm sorry I misspoke myself there. Sometimes I get ahead of myself and I don't speak correctly. So thank you uh, for drawing my attention to that. I appreciate that. Um, the next thing is is that we did have a question. It's off topic. Um, it's, sure. a, it's regards to uh, the Hurricane Sandy. Uh-huh. Um, I would like to pick that question up. Andrew wrote that question. I'd like to pick that question up in the second hour, uh, if we can, and I will answer that question for you in the second hour. Um, okay. Because it's off topic of what we were talking about. Um, that's a really long question to actually answer in regards to the depths and levels of information that came in as I was observing it uh, before, during, and the aftermath of Sandy. And um, I do want to say I hope that everyone that has loved ones or um, people that are there that have ex- physically <coughs> experienced this, um, this um, catastrophic event uh, for the safety and the health and the well-being of all of those that were uh, a part of this 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 um, not so pleasant event. So you know, our well wishes, our hearts, and boy, it's just outpouring all over the world for everybody that had to go through Sandy. So uh, yeah. a lot of love my was mom, felt. My mom's name is Sandy. Ah, uh, well, fantastic. Yeah, I was joking around with her. I said, why did you cause that blackout? Shame on you. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, when you, when, you, when you read those two things that you just read, there's something that clicked. Because you know how coincidence is actually coincidence, which means two things that coincide that you can't see? Those, those two things that you read off as far as people in a room and Hurricane Sandy, they both co- the, the, the two ideas coincide. Because 
what both of those things actually are is an observation of, of contrast. Because storms are neither good nor bad, they just are. And situations, circumstances, people, etc. are neither good nor bad, they just, they just are what they are. We're all on the level that we're on. So oftentimes when we go into a room and it's like, oh, this feels angry. You know, you ever, you ever notice that sometimes that, that can really contradict itself because outwardly people seem happy, they're laughing and they're happy, but it feels angry. And you're like, wait a minute, what's up with this? The reason for that, in my opinion, from my perspective, not that any of you have to agree or not, but just putting it out there, it's not that they're, they're angry. What you're feeling is an energetic difference in, in their paradigm of what makes them happy. Because what makes them happy could be very well be something that makes you feel angry. Some of these people like, you know, like watching WWE wrestling and maybe the idea of two people beating the crap out of each other up on stage for money and doing, doing injury to each other and on top of it, the match isn't even real, the outcome is rigged anyway. Maybe that's an idea that absolutely abhors you that it's at the very bottom end of your frequency and you're trying to move up to the top. So maybe all these things that make them happy, that they see as fun or funny, are, are things that you have a different energetic definition for. You see that as anger and hostility and yuck. So it's not that they're angry. It's that they're on such a, a different vibratory level that these are th that the things that make them happy are the things that make you angry. And that's what you're detecting. So if you remove judgment and you give yourself the right to be you and say, okay, it's cool that I feel this way, and it's also cool that they feel the way they feel. It's no problem. We can each have our perspective realities. There doesn't need to be a conflict. What you'll notice happening is that you start to feel a lot better. The energy just kind of levels off. You start aligning with yourself, and you'll feel a lot better. And then what you'll notice when you're fully grounded, fully, you know, it, it present, and fully allowing yourself to be you and them to be them, what you'll notice is that those that are, shall we say, comfortably compatible with you, like, you know, you might be looking at them thinking, oh, well, that's ignorant, but you're giving yourself your right to your opinion without judging them or judging yourself for it, so you can, you can kind of laugh it off and, and just have fun with them. You're just having fun from two different perspectives. They're having fun from one perspective. You're having fun from another so you will, you'll align with that section of the group in the room and you'll talk to them. The vast majority of the others, you'll notice that they're distancing themselves from you for no apparent reason, oftentimes to the point that they don't even realize that um, you're in the room because you're literally on a different space time than they are. So when you align with yourself and don't cast out judgment because what you put out you get back, allow yourself your opinions, allow them their opinions, you align with yourself it starts a trickle effect. They align with themselves. So you only align with the people in the room that you are tolerably compatible with in a way that you can flip it around in your own perspective and have fun with it without infringing on their sovereignty. And everybody else who's, who's in, in the room that isn't compatible with that just doesn't even notice you or ignores you, and they don't even know why they're doing it. They're not conscious of it. It's just an, an energetic frequency barrier that happens on its own. The, the, there's only chaos when you resist that automatic barrier, when you attach to something, when, when something's trying to move away and an ego wants to push it down and nail it to the floor and keep it with you and say, you must do as I say, then you're dominating something while simultaneously interpreting it as them trying to dominate you or that circumstance trying to dominate you. So then you're in self-victimization. Hey everyone, good evening. Welcome back. This is Journeys with Rebecca, and this is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, right here on Revolution Radio at FreedomSlips.com and also being simulcast on WolfSpiritRadio.com. Remember that both of these shows are listener-supported. They're commercial-free. So if you can, use the support buttons found on Revolution Radio or the donation button found on Wolf Spirit Radio. Chat boxes are open at freedomslips.com, wolfspiritradio.com, and journeyswithrebecca.com. Uh, there are monitors in there. We do have a few questions that are lined up that we'll get to in a little while. Uh, the next thing is, is our guest tonight is Dave Kelso. Uh, started out talking about um, 
the and I put those links in the chat boxes for everyone uh, to the uh, Roswell alien interview. Uh, it's on uh, on a U- on his YouTube channel, I think, in an audio format. Um, we there's a lot of people that would like for you to continue on with a, a little bit more of that discussion, if you don't mind, Dave. All right, cool. Actually, that that's exactly what I was going to do. Because what I was talking about previous was actually leading into Roswell and Alien Interview. Because it's that understanding with your fellow humans that you need to understand as far as paradigms that, you know, between yourself and ETs and so on and so forth. Because we're all just on our different levels, so to speak. It's not right, it's not wrong, or as Wendy and the Peas like to say, higher isn't better, lower isn't worse. We're just all on our different our different frequencies and the more we respect that the more we can understand this information and unfold it and that's exactly what is needed to understand the information within Roswell and Alien Interview because it was a completely it's I call it a that I call it a paradigm cluster frack um, although normally I use a, a different word that um, if you want to think of it as an acronym, <laughs> you, 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 you could call it, yeah, you could call it, you could call it finally understanding chakra knowledge if you put that in an acronym. You know, so it, it's, it's a bit of a cluster frack. And it, it's just really you got you to gotta let go to your higher self while you're listening to this. Otherwise, the logical mind is going to be like, Nyeh trying to listen to um, Roswell, an alien interview. Because what they were really explaining in big time, if you know how to tap into it, is how the quarantine field works. Why certain ETs can or can't get in and out. Why we can or can't get in and out. If you really know how to look at it. Plus, another reason that I call it um, a prequel to the bringers of the dawn is because it's doing the best it can to show you how to understand the genetic process and the triggering of genetic memory. But if you look at it from an old energy, it's all going to sound like blah, blah, blah. In fact, it's going to sound worse than blah, blah, blah. It's going to sound like a horrible nightmare, but only if you look at it like a little kid being afraid of the dark. But if you really look at it in the sense that you know, with 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 full knowledge that it is a paradigm cluster frack, so you got to trust your higher self. Then you start seeing what they're really talking about. You start seeing that the ET is attempting to explain frequency. Um, like for example, the the, the ET goes into um, well, they refer to all spiritual beings as isbies. That was a, a made up word, English word that was created at the time. Because the primary focus of an isbe is that an isbe is, and their purpose is simply just to be. So everyone and everything, all, all life, multidimensional life, is isbe. And um, in attempting to explain how multidimensionality and energy works, as far as how we get caught in traps and cycles and negative feedback loops. Um, the extraterrestrial was saying that there are demented isbies, and again, they're using totally the wrong English words, demented isbies that take pleasure in trapping other isbies, and that Earth is one of these sorts of prisons to where the isbies own energy ironically fuels the trap. So the more you struggle to get out of the trap, the more entrapped you are. And this whole concept that seems so big and scary and conspiratorial is, is, is nothing of the sort. All it is is what you resist persists. It's just an understanding of energy. Well, it's kind of like the whole premise of, uh, you know, uh, a small insect getting caught into a spider web. The more they struggle to get out, the more uh, entrapped they become in, in the web. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's the yeah. same thing. But, yeah, this uh, – I, I – I, I remember, you know, the more you talk about this, Dave, the more I remember uh, reading about this. It's been a while. It's been a minute. Uh, and I remember, when, especially when you brought up the Isby, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that now. And it kind of triggered a whole flood of uh, remembering of bits and pieces of that uh, particular interview. So, yeah, 
um, and and the whole idea behind uh, this being a prison planet, um, you know, is is not one that I disagree with. Uh, I do believe that the premise of the terminology prison planet is a misnomer um, yeah. on some uh, to a great extent, truly to a great extent, but uh, conceptually it sort of fits. Conceptually, it sort of fits. I think a better one would be a self-imprisonment planet, similar to self-victimization. That um, we've got ourselves caught up in our own mess, and as far as other ET involvements that are of the malevolent kind, not the benevolent kind, uh, all we we're just we're chumming for sharks, basically, without knowing we're doing it. So, I mean, if you're chumming for sharks, they're going to circle. But if you stop chumming for sharks, you're no longer compatible with them, and you know they're going to swim away because there's nothing there for them anymore. So it's not that these malevolent ETs are keeping us trapped. They are exploiting the fact that we are keeping ourselves trapped. So that's why they're doing everything to fight this awakening. But remember the nature of the trap. What you resist persists. So the more they resist the awakening, the more people awaken. So that's why all the nasty stuff that the Illuminati do, or the Illuminati's an archetype, by the way. I'm not meaning it so strictly. There's so many different factions, it's not even funny. But the more really nasty stuff that the Illuminati do, the more nasty natural disasters, like Hurricane Sandy, that, that people experience. All this nastiness, it's just contrast. All it does is accelerate the awakening of consciousness for the planet, because it shakes people awake, and people go, oh my god... They're, they have their whole existence stripped from them. They're left with the bare basics, so then they're able to start to see things as they are and pool together. And if they want that, and I'm not using this in a superiority terminology, but higher knowledge, meaning expanded metaphysics, expanded physics, like metamorphosis, if they want it, put, asking, asking the question is the same as getting the answer. So if they have a deep desire to have it, but just in a sense of wonder, not in a sense of lack. Synchronicity brings them the people, places, things, ideas, whatever, to answer it. And as crazy as it sounds for a lot of people, that's that's you know what my life is becoming more and more. I'm seeing that the more I ask, you know, the questions, the more the answer is in the question. And synchronicity brings me back the YouTube videos, the people to talk to, whatever. And that's really how Alien Interview and Alex Collier and a few other things have basically just, no pun intended, invaded my, my reality recently because I started to have certain ponderings, but I pondered them without judgment. Just ponderings like, really, well, if I wanted to meet ETs, how could I do it in such a way that wouldn't, like, freak me out or, or they wouldn't be violating the sovereignty thing? And, and you know... I know that like attracts like what you pers resist persists and so on, but there's got to be easier ways for me to, to learn how to navigate that in, in a world that it, it is becoming increasingly totalitarian. There's got to be these ways, and because I inquired of that, not in a state of, oh, I'm lacking it, but in a state of curiosity and wonder, I'm starting to pull this information towards me. And the more I integrate that information, there are parts of my life, like you just witnessed earlier, little blowouts and kabooms, that are just 3D representations of certain parts of the old energy trying to exit my life. And if you allow it to exit, what you find out is that you're able to see that circumstance from a completely different perspective and see information that wasn't there. And this is what Alien Interview, this is what the whole ET, quote-unquote, conspiracy, Illuminati, um, natural disasters, 2012, all of it, all of it. This is the point that has been trying to be gotten across, and, and even the Mayans say so. The Mayans predict at least three different timelines, and they're looking at the rest of us, and this is why we have movement, uh, movies like The Gods Must Be Crazy. They're looking at the rest of us like, oh, my God, we tell them about positive timeline, negative timeline and middle ground timeline and they all automatically go to the negative are these people on crack well you know good, you know good that it's actually a good analogy right there you know and, and i have to say when when 90 still I, i'm going to say a huge percentage i don't want to put an actual percentage mark on that of people will will gravitate 
towards the negative or the blood and the guts and the gore because they're so used to it that that they can't see the other side of it and and I, I've, I've, I've said this over and over again. If this is truly duality, if there's right and wrong, left and right, up and down, black and white, uh, you know, all of those things, male and female, if this is truly a, our dimension, the physics of our dimension is duality, then it would stand to reason, logically, in a dualistic society and uh, a world that we live in, that if there's negative, the other side, there has to be positive. Bingo! I, you know, I, I say this to people all, all the time when they come to me with these, you know, life sucks, blah, blah, self-victimization rants. I, I tell them, look, the only reason that you feel that you need struggle and burden and a monetary system and government. By the way, government is Latin for mind control. Look it up uh, for those who don't know. Um, people who feel they need this, it's that is a, the monetary system, all of it. It's based on a division, subtraction um, paradigm. But the thing is, is that to say this is the only real reality is to be in denial of the addition multiplication paradigm. And it's a scientific fact that you cannot have division and subtraction without um, multiplication and addition because, again, we live in a dualistic reality, right? So I tell people, you know, to say that, oh, all this BS is, is, the, is the only way it can go, that's like saying 2 plus 2 equals 1. That's being in complete denial of addition or saying that, that, that 10 times 10 equals 3. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and you know, it, you just have to, you know, I, I would love for people just to kind of stop and think about when they have a, a train of thought, um, if it comes from the negative aspect, that what would be the opposite or uh, the positive side of it. And, you know, that's what I try to tap into. I try to tap into that um, because that's what, what helps to keep me you know, um, I guess as sane as a person can be in these times, and I use and I use that term not in a not in the in the frame of being that our um, psychiatric community um, has determined who's sane and who isn't, because who 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 are they to determine the rest of the world's sanity or insanity, right? Yeah, yeah, true, true. One, one person stands up and says, "Here's my definition," and so everybody falls in suit. I'm like, "Oh my goodness." Uh, and and what makes your your um, kind of aspect of that uh, the only what aspect there could be of, of the definition of sanity and insanity, right? So you know yeah, we give yeah. our power away all the time. Uh, I don't want to go down yeah. that road. That's a big that's a big big can of worms right there. And I'm very not, true. I'm not opening that one up tonight. Um, very true. But I want to get matter? back. I want to get back Sorry, because you mentioned uh, again. You brought up um, a question of or made a statement about sovereignty. And DVC from uh, Revolution Radio uh, has a question. It says, how can you allow someone their sovereignty when they're not consciously being sovereign but robots? And my question back to you in regards to this, and I'll let you answer it too, Dave, if you, if you want. Um, yes, is, I want. Is that um, how could you not? It's, not a, it's, it, it's detachment. <laughs> you are not responsible for who they are or what they aren't, if you stand in your sovereignty by you being sovereign yourself, you're giving them the choice. Mm -hmm. And everything we do is a choice. And you don't have to buy into the fact that they choose not to be or choose to be sovereign. It's about the individual and holding yourself in integrity <clears throat> um, and holding yourself out of ego and detachment of what another is or is not doing. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that if this is somebody that you love, that's a family member, that you need to not love them anymore. It means you just simply recognize them as not in the space that you are. Not everyone is in the same uh, growth pattern, uh, the same mindset. My goodness, that would be just really boring. Um, but and, and just, just, just like my dad has the full right to have his head in the space of up his butt or earlier. I mean, it's <laughs> that's fine. He's in his sovereignty. It stinks a little, though, but he's in his well, sovereignty. And, and that's his choice. I mean, uh -huh. you know, exactly. 
more the more an individual stands in their sovereignty, it's it's called being a way shower. And and if we continue trying to uh, kind of coerce somebody or to make somebody look at the way that we are or believe the way that we do, then we're we're actually giving up our sovereignty exactly. by doing that. All we can do is be in our sovereignty. Exactly. That's why I said to my dad, I said, I take full responsibility for my part in this. And I, I said, because he's trying to talk, he was trying to put it in a perspective of blame, but I put it in, in a perspective of, hey, you have your part, I have my part, and I take my, I take responsibility for my part in it. And it shut down the whole thing. Right. And, and what else are they going to do? There, there's, not, there's, there's no argument to that. And if there is, then they have it with themselves, usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, may, may I answer uh, his... Uh, sure, please do. You see, th this is where I use a, a lot of analogy and, and metaphor, because that's what human language is based in. How could we communicate otherwise? Um, what, what I, how I like to say it is, um, like, when you're resisting something, um, it's, like, it's like driving with the, the parking brake on, you're, you're going to blow your transmission. In this case, it's, you're blowing the transmission of the point you're trying to get across because if everybody wants to think about it, and I'm pitching this, this question to the audience, but it's a rhetorical. How do you feel when someone comes up to you and says, here's what I'm trying to say. I have to convince you of it. I have to align you with it. You're going to see it my way. And the only way they know how to justify that is by intimidation. Oh, you're... Oh, oh, every idiot knows that. Oh, well, only a moron's going to think opposite to what I think, blah, 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 blah. That's resistance. What you feel is your mind is more and more closed off to their point. You want nothing to do with their point. You want nothing to do with them. Curiosity, on the other hand, opens minds. So when you become the example of the possibilities that somebody else's paradigm, they're sitting there, they're insisting Nope, this isn't possible. But then they look at you and you become the flying pink elephant, you know, 15 feet up in the air going by, metaphorically speaking. Then their logical mind can't deny that they really are observing what they really are observing. So now they have to start asking the questions. Now that I know that, that I'm seeing this happen, what is it? How did it happen? Why did it happen? And if they have access to the person responsible responsibility in their sovereignty if they have access to the person being that example then the only thing they could do even if it's reluctantly and they're half scared out of their mind to do it the only thing they could do is ask them what are you doing how are you doing it what's going on and it's very important that when someone because people come to me and ask me that sort of stuff it's very important that to know not to judge whatever their reactions are, because like Rebecca said, you're just giving them an option. The first reaction is they're usually going to rage hard against you. Oh, oh, you're being patronizing. You, you just don't want to tell me how, how you're really doing it. Fine, keep your secrets to yourself. Or, oh, you're just picking on me. I mean, I've had it to where I've told friends that, you know, I think, I think they're smart and I think they're awesome and so capable. And they took it as belittling when it was praising. So people are in their paradigms. You can only offer them the choice of, okay, you're going this way. There are other ways. You don't have to take those ways, but there are other ways. So you, it's like Gandhi said, be the change you want to create in the world. So whether your objective is peace in your life and to have everybody in your life that you want and everybody else out, or you're trying to align with a physical meeting with a UFO, you are never going to be able to do what's beyond the ceiling of your paradigm. So you have to clear and increase your ceiling. You have to start asking yourself questions. Okay, this is what I believe about this, this, and this. Why do I believe it? Who taught me that? Who told me that? Is it a, an original thought in my head? And if not, then what reason do I, do I have a, to believe it? And if I now have no reason to believe it, then what is reality? If this isn't, if this over here isn't, if that's a lie, then what's the truth? And you'll be amazed that synchronicity starts revving up in a high gear and bringing the answers to you. 
matter of fact, it can be very scary at first, but just know that fear is an illusion. If you transmute that, cure to, that fear to curiosity, instead of going, oh my God, no, my reality's changing. Instead of go, that, going, hmm, you know, this is kind of curious. This is really messed up in, in the funniest possible way. Why is my reality changing like this? Hmm, I need to investigate this. I'm quite curious about this. Then that's how you handle the change in energy and you're not freaking out. Well, that's true. All of that is true. So I, I uh, really appreciate you uh, uh, talking to, uh, you know, answering DVC. And I hope that helps to, uh, you know, answer his question for everyone. I so, appreciate you allowing me to be here and do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're very welcome. So let's move forward here. Let's... Um, Let's get let's get more um, moving a little bit more forward because there is some right. there's some things here and I'm getting a little bit of feedback now. Uh, there's some things here that uh, you wanted to share with people, uh, and uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, the little gal that was supposed to be on tonight, who uh, uh, whose name was Katerina, and we'll get in with her for just a minute uh, as well and talk about a little bit about her because this is going to be of some interest. Uh, to some of the folks out there, they they may certainly want to tune into this show uh, when we have her on because she's a crystal child. Um, um, so uh, she's got a unique uh, sense of direction, purpose, information. Uh, the crystal children are, are uh, very interesting um, beings uh, that have come forward and... Uh, We've had the pleasure of meeting several of them, uh, many of us have in this life cycle. And so they're unique. Uh, they're unique in some of the ways that they look at the world. And they can teach all of us a little something, that's for sure. Um, even the most seasoned person, uh, to even those that are younger and certainly those of the same age, they have a different idea of what life was supposed to be. And what age anyway? I'm sorry. What's age anyway? Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's how we measure our linear time here on Earth. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like the calendar and the clocks and all that. What does that really mean? Uh, not a whole not a whole lot. Not really. <laughs> not really. Well, 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 actually, the, the longer you have to put energy to something, the more it grows. So if someone puts spends 50 years... Um, having their head further up their posteriors and diving more and more into ignorance and becoming more efficient at it, then how does their age give them the right to stand up and say, I'm an expert and I have a PhD and I'm going to save you from, from, your, from yourself or whatever, when they've, they've spent 50 years becoming extremely good and extremely professional and have, having their head up their butt and being completely blind. You know, now if, if you're looking to be blind, then someone who has 50 years of, of blindness experience is who you're going to want to align with. But otherwise, you know, you might not want to go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I want to, let's see, um, let me pull my calendar up here. I think she is on for, let me look, let me double check here. Uh, she is on for the 8th. <clears throat> Pardon me, a week from tonight, Katarina will be on. Uh, yep. We're going to have a, a, a conversation with her on the air. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, it's it's time that we hear from uh, f- from some of these people and have them bring forth this information uh, Heck yeah. on how Heck the, yeah. how, on their perspective on life and what what they understand because I think we all need that expansion I think we all need that uh, you know greater understanding you know one of the things I, I, I want and I want to bring this up because I was thinking about this the other day uh, especially talking about uh, you know age and that kind of thing and um, you know, I, I I watch as as people grow older um, and how they become kind of set in their ways, and um, they're not as um, uh, uh, as exploratory. Uh, they're not uh, certainly as ambitious and whatever the heck that means. Uh, they they um, they get they have a tendency to kind of sit back and relax with everything, and they get to the point of almost lethargy um, with that. And I think, wow, you know, I, I, we, we constantly need to 
communicate with those younger and older than ourselves, not just stay in our own little uh, kind of click, so to speak, in our own age grouping, uh, even though when you're in with people that are of similar age groupings, you usually have a tendency of being more like-minded. You've had similar life experiences. You have, you have a lot of things that, you know, obviously you can connect with. But when, when we get outside of our, uh, our comfort zone, so to speak, and we reach out to those that are younger or older than us and we sit with them, oh, my gosh, the wealth of information, the unique perspectives that they bring to the table, that, that's only expanding. It's only expanding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and um, when you, when you uh, check your little uh, box in, in the Skype, um, what's going to happen is uh, when Rebecca pastes that, you're going to see um, Katerina Edwards' information. So you don't have to wait for the 8th. <laughs> um, I mean, we'll be happy to have you all here on the 8th, of course, but you don't have to wait. You can find her on DeviantArt. You can find her on Facebook. You can find her on YouTube. Um, I just gave Rebecca that information to, t- to toss in. So um, if you want to see her, you want to hear her, you want she's an artist. Um, you know, she she sings, she plays music, she's a poet. Um, she's uh, been, been to Chicago here with me, so I had the benefit of meeting her in person. Um, you know, she lives in the Portland area. Um, she uh, recently spent a few months woofing in Hawaii. Um, very amazing, um, adventurous girl. And a year ago, she was she was completely 180 in, in the opposite paradigm that, you know, we all came from, quote unquote. And she has paradigm shifted so amazingly, so gracefully. I mean, you know, for, for those of us who have taken a lot longer to do our shifting and come to terms with things, you see her learn the same lessons in a fraction of the time. So from our perspective, perspective observing someone like her it's like watching an olympic athlete just magically dance through everything but from her perspective you know because she's such a fish in water so to speak try explaining water to a fish even if they could talk right um she's like oh i just went through all this hardship and whatever shall i do and how however shall i deal with it however shall i go on and someone like me comes up and goes oh my god katarina look what you just did this is awesome you know, and it really just kind of, you know, teaches us that limitation is an illusion. Because if she could do it that easily, so can we. We just got to get over certain paradigms. Because youth teaches and age guides. You see, society has it a bit backwards. I mean, even look at the, you know, Pleiadians and whoever. How old are they, right? And what are they? There are guides. And what do they refer to us as? Their teachers. And this is completely true. So it's no wonder the educational system has it in reverse. It's a backwards. Uh, well, everything about this, everything about this world that we know is actually the opposite of what it really, truly is. Yeah. Um, from from education to raising children, what's family, what's relationship, what's education, it's all backwards. Even mm-hmm. even the use of um, uh, words. Language, language is actually backwards, um, and and you know the trend has been here over the last uh, I'm going to say about six months. Um, you know, uh, I, I've actually have been having little short pieces of conversation with a lot of different people, and um, there's people all over mentioning uh, the whole thing about language and its restriction. And what words really mean if we get into, uh, I mean, some ancient, ancient, old uh, uh, text uh, yeah. about what words really mean and how we actually use them is incorrect. And, of course, that's, mm-hmm. that's been very carefully controlled and manipulated. Uh, you know, I'd like to say that it wasn't, but unfortunately, that is the truth of it. So when we use these words repetitively over and over again, we're feeding that uh, erroneous way of uh, verbiage which doesn't create um, anything but illusion and exactly and, and most of us you know we don't even know it because it's what we've all been taught and most of us aren't aren't language professors we didn't yeah. study these old languages but more and more I realize at least for myself 
it's it's becoming this one of these things in the back of my mind where I'm thinking, you know, I I'm thinking I'm ready uh, to tackle um, something different here than what I've been doing. And one of them is to maybe study the old languages and uh, the many. There's not just one. Uh, many of the old languages and to really see what these words are that we're using and how they're really yeah. manipulating our our world. Uh, you know what one of you know what one of the funniest and most ironic reversals is for me. Um, the words the words angel and demon. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do the research and, and you know look back and, and trace that back, um, the word demon came from another word that simply meant benevolent multi dimensional being. And the word angel goes back to to that meaning um, reptilian or what we refer to as demon. So even that's been switched. You know, and, and I actually had somebody on, gosh, I don't remember, it was very recently, somebody talking about demon and that it actually meant uh, a messenger of light, uh, that it was a light being, uh, had, uh, in other words, benevolent. Yeah. Uh, de- be- benevolent messenger of light. Um, so, you know, and I, I'm, I've said it, I don't know, dozens of times now, and I'm going to say it probably a dozen more. Jordan Maxwell, you know how you always have these questions, and they, I call them my musings, you know, I'll sit and muse about stuff, and, and I'll wonder, you know, what's that about, what's this, you know, uh, picking up on different, um, you know, subtleties, different things, and it, it causes me to question, right? And I met Jordan Maxwell back in 2009 at the Awaken Aware Conference. Cool. And him and I sat down and we had this uh, off-air discussion. I also did a short interview with him uh, as well when I was at the Awaken Aware Conference. And one of the things that he talked to me about was language. And he said, everything that we know about language is actually the opposite of what it means. And let me let me share with you some examples. And so he went on to talk about some examples about some different words. And then he went on with this whole dissertation on, and this is the part that I recorded. It should be, I'm hoping it, that it's up in the uh, Wolf Spirit Radio archives. Uh, go back to the year 2009. It should have the Awaken Aware uh, interviews there. If not, um, I hope somebody out there that's listening will let me know because I'll get that over to him so then get it uploaded. Uh, because he talks about, he specifically gave me the example of the legal system on what it means to uh, uh, passing the bar, what the exam means, why the judge is who he actually is, what it actually stands for, uh, why it's actually set up physically, set up the way that it is, what that means. It was, I was just extraordinarily mesmerized by this pieces of information. And it resonated so deeply and so truthfully with me. I was like, and it really just clicked every, a lot of other different things open. And I began looking at the way that I had looked at things previously and everything shifted. In yeah. that, uh, I think I spent maybe a, a, an hour with him. And in that hour was probably, uh, uh, it w- was extraordinarily in-depth, just that one hour of information exchange. It was yeah. like this little magical world and there was just me <laughs> him in there. And it was it was extraordinary to be sure. And, yeah, that's, that's cool. That's really awesome. Remember that little girl, Katie? Yes. When she wanted to know what you looked like, I showed her the part where you were in the Awaken Aware conference in 2009, so it's interesting you bring that up. Fascinating. <laughs> Fascinating. Of course, I don't look like that anymore, you know, but uh, not not exactly anyway. Uh, yeah, the looks change. I, I, I morph a lot, um, as I've <laughs> been told. Yeah. I cut my hair, grow my hair, uh, gain weight, lose weight, you know, just all kinds of weird stuff. Change my style of everything, my makeup, all of it. It's never the same uh, because I'm not the same. So it reflects my changes. Yep. So I, I think that's fascinating as well. Yeah, yeah. No one's accused you of being a reptilian shapeshifter yet, have they? Uh, they've accused me of a lot of things. I'm not sure if that was one of them, though. <laughs> What, what was the accuser wearing a black shirt with a little like like white thing on the front there on the collar? Mm, we, sh- we, we, we we shall not discuss those ones. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, we shall not discuss those ones. Let me get the modern to, day Pharisees. Yeah, let me get to this question before we continue on cool. with this discussion and we run out of time here tonight. This has really been fun, by the way. Uh, oh, this one again was Loving from it. Andrew about the uh, Hurricane Sandy. 
Um, okay. I don't want to spend a great deal of time on it, um, but I, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes sharing uh, with everyone my particular view. And remember, this comes from my view. This is in no way um, – I, I don't uh, anticipate everyone's going to agree with my view, and that's – it's okay. I'm just giving you it from my viewpoint. My viewpoint is, is that uh, prior to it approaching – uh, one of the things that I noticed is that they were talking about this storm uh, that was building, um, that had the potential of a hurricane. And I don't watch these reports. So when my attention gets drawn to something, there's always a reason for it. So I kind of looked at that, and I, I call it picking it up, and I put it on the shelf. So the shelf is there in front of me, so it's you know kind of in my um, eyes view there. And then... Not even 24 hours later, they were talking about this becoming a hurricane, that it was going to hit, uh, you know, the southern tip down there, I think, in uh, uh, the Cuba area, and then move on up into Florida. So at that point, it hadn't even arrived as a hurricane yet. They were already projecting in certain places that it was going to hit uh, parts of Florida, and uh, the first one that they projected was that it was going to then just bounce off to the right, uh, go up to the right and go out into, you know, the ocean and, and dissipate. Within less than 12 hours later, they were then talking about, oh, no, it's going to do something very, very different. It's going to come up and it's going to make a, a, a unheard of left-hand turn and it's going to go right back in and hit the East Coast. Yeah. And so, you know... That's why my attention was drawn to it, because I looked at all these little discrepancies along the way. So even prior to it becoming what it became, it was already manufactured to become what it became. Yeah. It was not a naturally occurring event all in of its own. The natural occurring event was accentuated, then controlled and manipulated to become exactly what it was and going exactly where they wanted it to go. No question for me, no question at all, when you watch how this thing built, what the first trajectory was, which is logical according to that, and then all of a sudden these other storms came in, um, these uh, different fronts from one side to the other, uh, by way, which weren't as big as they uh, ended up being, these cold fronts that pushed uh, this Hurricane Sandy uh, supposedly into this left-hand turn. Well... I'm not a meteorologist, and I'm certainly not a rocket scientist. But, you know, <laughs> energetically, I can tell you that what happened there is not an anomaly. Yeah, it wasn't a back phenomenon. Back. It wasn't a uh, just one of those fluke freaks of nature that happened. Agreed, and, Rebecca. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, may, may I um, add, add something in on that sentiment, now, if I may? It, you give me just one second. I was almost sure. done here, and sure, and sure. so sure. as it as it hit land and as it did all that and and it, all of this came up, you know I wasn't the only one that was paying attention because now people were hopped on this bandwagon, but prior to all of this, and the researchers started doing their research, and they have found. Uh, all the pieces of information about how it was fed, how it was uh, seeded, uh, how it was controlled and manipulated. Now, now the back end of the story is is who was behind it all? Who was who was behind the reason why uh, Sandy hit it is? And it's from anything to anything. You know, uh, people are all kinds of people are are pointing fingers that it's this or it's that or it's another. And my opinion is it doesn't matter who it was that this was a very well orchestrated event. Um, and it's against humanity, um, and you know we have we have to draw attention to this stuff somehow. We have to stop this stuff from going on. Yeah. So that's my my view of it. I knew it was coming. I knew it wasn't real. Uh, we've got people out there that are, the great researchers out there that have now got the the data to to prove uh, that it was manipulated and seeded, um, and that it was directed. Uh, by using HARP and by using chemtrails and uh, nanotechnology, there was all kinds of different levels of activity with Sandy. And I'm oh, sorry yeah. for everyone that had to experience it, really. Now, people who are looking for a singular cause need to ask themselves, which ingredient are they trying to blame for the existence of the cake? 
so that they could just see the, the ridiculousness of the train of thought. It's always more than one thing. And I want to add another element, because I agree with you. Um, people have noticed that sunrises, sunsets, and, and the moon, the way it's been traversing, and all this other stuff has been very wobbly and very off. And they've noticed, you know, that the the Earth's um, rotation has been on this weird double wobble. And, again, I'm only sharing my perspective. I'm not asking anyone to believe me. Do your own homework. But from the homework I've done and what I've been observing in, in my skies here in Chicago and putting all the pieces together <clears throat> is that the Earth has done a 20-degree axis shift forward in the direction of, of the sun, so that that's why we're seeing, you know, warmer than normal autumns, really hot um, summers, uh, things of that nature. In my opinion, these shifts and all that, they are natural, but um, you got to understand something about harp and all that. They, those things are extremely limited, which is why you need all these other ingredients to go into the overall cake. So you might ask yourself, well, gee. When Katrina, when Hurricane Katrina hit, why didn't they just land it on the on the East Coast rather than than uh, you know New Orleans? Why not have done this in the first place? If you look at the science of it, you you will see that it is easier to create an East Coast hurricane with a twenty degree axis shift, the, the Northern Hemisphere going twenty degrees, you know, more angled to the sun because you've got more warm air to deal with. How are hurricanes created? Collisions of warm and cold, right? And now the jet streams are going north and south instead of east and west. So you've got your bullseye target. You've got your your jet streams north and south. You've got your um, east-west alteration on, on the access tilt. Um, you know, you've got all of the ingredients, and all you need to do is sprinkle in a few seasonings, like harp and whatever else and it's easier to push and pull for an east coast hurricane that's my perspective well and i have to tell you you're you're absolutely right in regards to the uh shifting and the wobbling um and you know i talked a lot about that over the summer where uh i looked out over the window and i was like you know i don't remember you know i have a garden area out there in the back and i looked at it and i was like i don't remember the garden uh, uh being in shade at this time of the day Mm -hmm. Um, and then you begin to start noticing even more and I began talking about it and other people had already noticed it as well so it became quite a topic of conversation there for a little while uh, about that you know where the quote unquote sun rises and sets it doesn't really do that we we kind of travel around but that's what it appears like to us is rising and setting of the sun uh, is in a very different uh, orientation. Even the lights yeah. coming in the other side of the house is very different than what it was oh, yeah, a year yeah, ago. Yeah. yeah. You know what? You know what, Rebecca? This is the first year that I've ever had the sunset beam directly into my bedroom window on the second floor here. And you know, I posted about this on YouTube and stuff, and people are all, are like, "Oh, you idiot! It's seasonal tilt of the Earth." I said, oh, really? Well, then how do you explain that the, that at the sunset during the summer, it's never, ever, 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 ever beamed into my bedroom like this? And I have a pond in my backyard. The way the light and shadow comes across the pond is in a completely different configuration than it's always been. And you can check that out on Pondscape on YouTube. That's the channel name. Um, you can see my pond and stuff. But the sun used to come in a certain way, and now we have all these... The shifting and the sun makes completely different patterns. The light and shadow are making completely different patterns on the surface of the water throughout the day. And um, in the summer, me and, me and my dad, we tend to know how to tell time by the sky, right? So I asked my dad, hey, what time is it? And he was about to, to look and he's like, nah, we know how to tell it from the sky. I'll just look to check to see if I'm right. So he looks up in the sky and the, and the sun was in the... Um, the two o'clock position and it ended up being four thirty, and we were like what the heck and i'm like yeah there we go yeah and and again you know and so there's two things here one is time is really not relevant (laughs) (laughs) that too but you know yeah the clock is not relevant but it is a good indicator for uh for especially in a situation like that right and the second thing is is that you just have to honor what you know you know 
and you knew that that the configuration is different. Just like I looked out the window and I was like, that didn't used to be in that position. Last year it wasn't in that position. Yeah. My neighbors have asked me, what's up with the sun? It's going in this S zigzag pattern in the sky. It's not setting where it should be. It's not rising where it should be. Uh, shadows are different. Shade versus sunlight, different type of thing. I've had neighbors mention yep. it to me. Neighbors who, who don't really know much about this stuff, and they're just like, oh, there's something going on. What's up with this? What's up with this? Yeah, and, and you know, this is also can be attributed to, uh, this is also can be an, in, an indication with these uh, magnetic uh, shifts and the magnetic uh, changes, uh, and and certainly where our planet is in in space itself and its you know its trajectory through space, everything is new and different, and it has brought forth uh, you know a multitude a multitude of people uh, that have these like phantom aches and pains, and I, when I say phantom, what I mean is they just come and go. They're not chronic they don't stay with them for a long period of time um you know things that resemble like the flu or things that resemble like fibromyalgia or things that resemble like uh, a cold or sinus issues and then you know less than 24 hours later the symptoms quote unquote are gone or yep. in 12 hours they're gone or these strange headaches that that are a headache but not really a headache and uh, people uh, talking about heart palpitations that don't have issues with their heart. You know, they're not physically ill that way. Or feeling uh, wobbly and, and uh, strange and weak. Uh, and, and then it passes. Uh, dizzy spells that aren't really dizzy spells. The feeling of uh, a loss of equilibrium. Um, all of this is all about, uh, first of all, is the timeline convergences. We've talked about that before on this show and the... Uh, the different dimensional rifts that, you know, are going through, you know, they keep playing with all these technologies um, and, and they're creating a huge mess out there. There's, you know, a mess upon a mess upon a mess upon a mess. And we haven't even seen uh, the results of some of these experimentations uh, and all the buildup of all these experimentations. It's been done on this planet for millennia of time. Um, and they don't know what the outcome is. They don't know what the long-term effect is. Uh, on this planet or on this, uh, on the humans, the inhabitants here, uh, all of them. I'm talking about plants and animals and insects, the whole nine yards, amphibians. Um, you know, they keep messing around with stuff. Um, and, you know, there's just a whole lot going on right now. And, you know, yeah. I, and, and I, I really, I like to talk to people about, look, you know, as long as it's not something that's ongoing, like a, an ongoing pain or an ache or a sickness or illness, that you're feeling or uh, that you really think you need to go and see somebody and get it checked out, then let's see if it passes in 24 hours. If not, then certainly go check it out with your health care professional, whoever that might be of your choice. Um, but most of the time, most of these, these strange things that are going on is because of, you know, everything else that's going on besides the natural things, how they're enhancing these natural things with these artificial things with the, uh, you know, the chemtrails and the GMOs and the heart frequencies and you name it. And stuff that we haven't even heard about yet. You know, I can see all of it, but of course I don't know exactly what it is because I, um, I, I don't know what to call it because I haven't been able to identify it. There's a lot more going on out there than just what we know about that's been talked about. Sure. So, that being said, wow, I think we answered their question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think we should. I think we should move back into because we've only got like what nine minutes left. Uh, we don't even have that. I, I, I'm yeah. not sure if it'll come at 55 till. It goes between 55 and 59 till. So okay. we've got anywhere from uh, four to say six or seven minutes. Okay, so, Katerina so. Edwards. Let's um, let's let's kind of deal deal with the that topic. Katerina Edwards, Crystal Children, so on. Well, we have the time. Um. She, she's been my absolute best friend. I mean, she's, she's amazing. And her and I are perfect mirrors. <laughs> and it's just, we teach each other so much. And it's so incredible how synchronistically that our lives um, align, you know, with, with each other. And, you know, it's like one of the most ironic things is that she will teach me a lesson just by being herself, 
but she's not teaching herself the lesson. She's teaching me. And then as a guide, I have to then reflect the lesson back to her so she can learn it. And it's the most ironic thing to teach someone what you're not even conscious of so then they can teach you what you taught them. It's one of the, me and her laugh about it all the time. It's happened like, like so much. It's just, it's freaking great. Um, just one of those things to, to, to make you chuckle when you witness it. And it really helps get rid of the self-victimization stuff. And it, it, it helps move you more into your sovereignty because you see, yeah, you know, there's like a quantum dynamic to this. It's not just random chaos and you're just freaking screwed. There's a there's a, a method to the madness and a, a madness in the method. You can see the symbiosis of it. And the more you start to let go of your paradigms and be open to observing the tree on the hill, as it were. A- another analogy me and Katerina like to use is we like to... Um, to, to, to try to determine whether or not there's a tree in front of us by putting a, a blindfold over our eyes and calculating what we know of the probabilities of whether or not there may or may not be a tree in front of us. And when someone walks up and says, well, why don't you just take the blindfold off? They go, no, that's stupid. You're not going to trick me into that. that. That would be too easy. That's not realistic. The only reality is, is lack and, and struggle and, and scarcity and, and burden and suffering. You're not going to insult my intelligence by telling me it's as easy as taking off the blindfold and looking at the tree in front of me. That's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but it is, Grasshopper. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> and we're all peeling back those blindfolds and going, oh, my God. And that's another thing. When you peel back the blindfold and you finally see, the next trap is feeling stupid and going into self-victimization. Oh, my God, I can't do anything. I'm so stupid. No. You were blind, but now you see. Be happy about it. Be in a state of joy and align with that. Don't regret the fact that you didn't see for X amount of days, months, years, whatever it is that you're self-victimizing about. Just be like, woohoo, I can see now. So I'm in the present. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to use this knowledge to continue to make my life better. Don't be in self-victimization of, oh, I'm so stupid. I should have seen this all before. No, use it in the now. Make your life better with that knowledge in the now. It's all fertilizer. It's all contrast. So grow a garden. Yeah, I love that idea is, is to grow a garden. There you yeah, go. When, when, if I may say it, when shit and fan rendezvous grow a garden. That's right. If life deals you lemon, make yeah. lemonade, baby. And, you know, the fan is just automation. It spreads out the shit to, to a much wider area, you know, m- more efficiently. So now you don't have to go out there and work the field yourself. Now you just got to go and plant the seeds. The fertilizer's already been uh, been distributed when uh, shit and fan rendezvous. So it's all been do- it's it's all been done for you. A quantum public service. So don't go into self victimization. Be thankful for it. Align with your sovereignty. And you know, even a jet plane would not be able to fly if not for the wind resistance in its space being channeled by the wing flaps and tail flaps. Without that resistance against it, it would be a very expensive paperweight on wheels. So. <laughs> When you're getting resistance, fly. Don't go into self-victimization. Take off. Fly. Very good analogy. I like that. I absolutely love that. That's an extremely wonderful analogy. And, you know, I have to say, this has been a lot of fun having you here tonight. I'm it's been a looking, lot of fun being here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Katerina being on next week. She um, is awesome. You're going to love her, and she's going to love you. Oh, I, I know I'm going to love her. She's, she's, <laughs> I already love her, and I don't even know her. Uh, well, not in that way. I mean, you know, I, I, know, I, I, I know, know her, I know. Uh, <laughs> but I've never actually spoken with her. Let's let's reframe that. So, um, but she's she carries a really fun, unique, and beautiful energy, and so it's going to be very nice to share that uh, with everyone next week. I want to make yeah. mention of my guest for for tomorrow night. Her name is Sam. She's known as Muggsy by a few. I had her on uh, early on in this year. Uh, she's an, an extremely, uh, powerful, intuitive healer. Uh, she's working in, uh, she's just got her degree in naturopathy. Um, she is an extremely dynamic lady. She is going to be on tomorrow night. I want to let everyone know that my website has not been updated a great deal, uh, because I'm actually working on building a whole brand new one. Uh, um, so I will go in and try to post some new updates uh, to the JWR radio page, which is where all the guests are going to be, um, and get that up 
for tomorrow so everyone can have her links. And uh, you'll be able to find that information. And in the newsletter will be uh, all the information on Katerina as well as uh, the updates on who the guests are. I've got some fantastic guests coming up. Uh, and the links to Alien Interview, the links to Alien Interview, get them in there, Sharon. Yes, I will. Uh, I, I will cool. actually cool. put, I'm actually going to put those in the, um, uh, in the newsletter for everyone. I'll put those in the newsletter as well as posting awesome. them on the site. Um, I'm actually building, by the way, for everyone, I'm building a, a page on the new site that is going to have uh, some of these fantastic pieces of information uh, that has been shared through the shows, uh, through the guests. So you can go back and have a, a place uh, in which to reference uh, these pieces of information that you are that you hear on these shows with these fantastic guests. So I will be getting a hold of you, Dave, and certainly placing that uh, on the website, getting all those correct links. Uh, awesome. in the new one, uh, it won't show up in the old one because some of the pages I, I am no longer able to touch uh, because yeah. they're being handled uh, by something else. So some of the pages won't be updated. They're still obviously live and active. All the pages are. But the new website is going to have a place for all of that uh, kind of really fun yeah. stuff. I'm also going to uh, I'm building a forum. Um, I'm uh, So there will be some interaction that people can have uh, yeah. and comments that they can make. So it's going to be a lot of fun with the new website. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Sorry, sorry I couldn't help you with that like I originally intended. But 20... 2012 just got crazy. <laughs> well, it's not over yet. And wait and hang on your hat, honey, because 2013 is even going to get um, oh yeah <laughs> more, more normal weird. <laughs>